thing. If you will notice it like capital T, capital T and small t, small t. So all the uh, F1 generation, we are getting capital T, small t, capital T, small t, capital T, small t, capital T, small t. The so similar way here, two characteristics we are making. So that is why. So what will be the genotype? Genotype. You will notice it here. What will be the genotype and phenotype of the offsprings obtained from the above cross they are asking? So what is the genotype we used to get? So genotype, father is having a gray hair. So that gray hair means capital G definitely will come. Either capital G, capital G or capital G, small g. And red eyes are there. So red eyes is the recessive gene. And you will see female capital people, it won't come. Because here is having white hair and black eyes. Black eyes is dominant one. So that is why we used to get what? See, gray hair and uh, white hair, who is dominant? Uh, gray hair is dominant, so that gray hair will come. And red eyes and black eyes, who is dominant? Black eyes is dominant, so we used to get black eyes. So that is what is the is the genotype which is going to get in the children. So children will get one characteristics from the father. Father is having a gray hair, gray hair will come. And mother is having black eyes, black eyes will come because dominant one. While I'm teaching the last concept of this uh, uh, traits, inherited and acquired traits, I taught you that mother and father, one diagram also I have shown you. Have you remembered? Mother and father, different colors and uh, babies, they're having different, different things. That is the same question. They replaced it with the uh, uh, rabbits here. Nothing is there. So that we can say genotype is capital G, small g and capital B, small b. So that we can say what is the phenotype? What is the phenotype, Padmoshni? We can say it is what? Gray hair. Gray hair and black eyes. Gray hair and as well as black eyes. That is what we have to write it. Next. What are the phenotype of the rabbits that have the following genotype? So what are the follow, what are the uh, phenotype of the rabbit that having following the genotype? So this is the genotype they have given. What is the phenotype? Tell me. So capital G, capital G both are small BB. So that what we can say, capital G means what it is. It is the gray hair. Yes or no, guys? Whenever you can see either capital G, capital G or capital G, small G, it is a gray hair. So now that is what? So now small B, BB. What is that? Small BB. Right red eyes that is what you have to remember so red eyes clear guys any doubt anyone that is what you have to remember next small gg capital bb anybody small gg capital bb small gg means what white hair and uh, white hair white hair and black eyes Black, black eyes. eyes. Very good. That is what. If you answer it, you can understand. Black eyes. Very good. Clear? Next. Write all the possible genotype expression for gray hair and white hair rabbits. Anybody? Gray hair and white hair rabbits. Gray black hair. Will be capital B, small gray, B, small B. gray hair. Tell me, Padmoshni. Gray hair, I am asking. Gray hair, what is that? Either capital, capital G, B, capital, B, capital G, small G. Next. White hair, tell me, guys. White hair, only one thing. Small gg. Small gg. White hair. Yeah, very good. Next, black eyes, dominant one. Either capital BB or capital B, small b. Next, red eyes. Red eyes, only one option. What is that? Small b. Small b. It is recessive gene. Yes or no, guys? That is what. It's a very simple question. You will get full mark if you have been understand the question. Next, list out all the possible gametes produced by a hybrid male rabbit having gray hair and black eyes. Hybrid means F1, F1 crossing we have to do so that F2 crossing we have to get it. So hybrid male rabbit having gray hair and black eyes. What is the possibilities? Tell me. Gray hair and black eyes. Capital G, capital B, gray hair and black eyes, uh, black eyes, or else gray hair and they are saying black eyes so that we can say small b, understand? So now small b and capital B, or else small g and capital B. So this is what the possibilities list out all the gametes produced by hybrid male rabbit having gray hair and black eyes. So gray hair and black eyes, what is the thing? Gray hair, tell me all of you. Gray hair possibilities what? Either capital gray hair, 
capital GG and black eyes, you can take capital BB. So this is one possibility. Second one, or else you can take capital G, small uh, small G, and capital B, small B. So this is the two, two times of uh, genotype. Yes or no, guys? So what is the gametes they are asking? So gametes, what is the gametes that will form? Either it will form capital G, ca uh, capital G, small, capital B, or else capital G, small B. Understand? Or else we can say small G, capital B, or else last F2 crossing, what will come? Both small G and capital uh, small B will come. So this is the genotype which will be, uh, sorry, gametes produced by a hybrid male rabbit having a hair, a gray hair and black eyes. This is what you have to remember it. So that is the easiest question. If you will understand the question, this is the easiest one. If you will make it directly, they clearly mentioned uh, gray hair is the dominant one, white hair is the recessive gene. Next, same way black eyes are dominant and red eyes are recessive. That's all. You will be finishing. Now, experiment number, uh, sorry, question number 15 regarding our physics very very important and it is related to the magnetism let us see so as we know michael faraday michael faraday means immediately in your mind you have to remember what is that electromagnetic electromagnetic induction michael faraday if you have been seen you have to remember my electromagnetic induction so now he introduces the concept of magnetic lines forces to represent magnetic field visually according to his experiment when a bar magnet is surrounded by a little bits of iron fillings each a little magnet of its own by tapping the surface the iron fillings arrange themselves in a particular pattern they respond to an unseen presence unseen presence what faraday called it the lines of force that is what magnetic field lines so the following sketch shows the lines of force due to a bar magnet on the accumulated action of action on little iron fillings this is what the diagram so this is we are very familiar with this diagram so this is only the diagram the magnetic field lines formed by bar magnet yes or no guys please respond so this is what it has been done now if you'll see what does the degree of closeness of magnetic field lines near the poles of Signi uh, signify anybody what does the degree of close uh, force is more than yes magnetic force is more that is what i said padmarshini use the scientific words don't say me uh, more or less sir you have to use a stronger or weaker because it is a magnet so you tell me so as i told you at the poles wherever the magnetic field lines are crowded what we can say krutiga arvin Magnetic field lines are crowded. So as we know, we can say that what? It is the magnetic, magnetic field is stronger near the poles. It is the strongest. That is. So the magnetic field is the strongest. That's all. So you are going to get how many marks for this? Arvin? One mark. Purima? One mark. That is what? Next. What happens if a bar magnet is cut into two pieces along its length? Along its length, they are asking. So what is happening? Along its length, if you will cut into two pieces, then what is happening? Or else, uh, they are saying that if you will uh, cut it into uh, like this. So along its length only, they are saying, so that we can cut it into same way. So now if you will cut it into two pieces, what is happening? What is so here, if you'll cut it into two pieces, here we'll get north and south pole, and here also we'll get north and south pole. Yes or no, guys? But one thing is happening. A big magnet, if you'll cut it into two pieces, then what is happening? A strength of the magnet also. A strength of the magnet is also what? If I'll make it into two pieces, then north pole, south pole, north pole, south pole, so that the force exiting by the magnet also reduces. Means the strength is going to reduce strength is also reduces understand means what is going to happen what is going to happen guys the uh, independently they are going to act as an independent magnet understanding independent magnets but the strength is also reduces that is the answer so that what is the mark you're going to get one mark so each piece will behave like an independent magnet but with the reduced pole strength the strength of the pole the strength of the magnetism will reduce that is what next draw a diagram indicating uniform magnetic field let me see who will draw draw a diagram which is indicating uniform magnetic field you cannot draw uniform magnetic field means what 
as I told you, bar magnet inside RL solenoid. So uniform magnetic field means whenever you are getting uniform magnetic field, you have to draw R. I have taught you three lines, three types of lines. Have you remember? Varshini? So magnetic field lines, which is passing from south pole to south pole to what? North pole, inside the pole. Only it will be happening. So I have taught you three kinds of magnetic field lines. Have you remembered? Same, equal, uniform magnetism, same direction, different direction, non-uniform magnetism, Nitish. Well, in teaching, I have taught you three diagrams like this. You might be noticing it. Three different directions, strength is different. Uniform magnetism, but different directions. Different directions and different magnetism. Like that, uniform magnetism, same direction. Like these three I have taught you. So they're asking uniform magnetic field lines so that it will pass from north to south. This is the answer for that. Okay. Next. What is the direction of magnetic field lines outside a bar magnet? Outside a bar magnet, what is happening, guys? Outside a bar magnet. From the outside a bar magnet. North pole to north pole to the south pole. That's all, guys. So that is what. So you'll get for this drawing line one mark and this point one mark. So that is what is simple. Now, R R table they are mentioning. So a current flows downward in a wire that passes vertically through a table top. What will be the direction of magnetic field lines when viewed from above the table? They are asking. So anybody can tell me. Imagine it and tell me. Two magnetic field lines never intersect each other. This already we know the reason. So now in this one you tell me a current flows downward direction downwards in a wire that passes vertically through a table top. So you can take it, you can see this is the table top, all of you remember. So oh. current is kept like this. Yeah, very good, Padmasini. Now current is passing downward direction. Anybody? So downward direction means it is a clockwise or anti-clockwise. Check it and tell me. The current is passing downward direction. Anybody? Hold your uh, thumb like that and you tell me. Clockwise or anti-clockwise? All right, hold like this, man. This is the thumb indicating downward. So my, our four fingers will be rotate like this. So it is what direction? It is the clockwise that, that's all. So you will get one more. Understand? So that is the reason. If you want, you can draw it also. Next, two magnet field lines will never intersect each other. What is the given reason? Because it is not going to be happen. Yes or no? At the point of intersection, what is happening? The two magnet two different directions will be there, sir. It is possible. So usually if the at the point of intersection, if you'll draw a tangents. Then what is happening? This answer clearly have been given. So the magnetic compass need to deflect into what? Two different directions, which is basically not possible. So that is the reason the two lines will never intersect. Okay. So the resultant force on North Pole at any point can only in one direction always. So it is not possible to deflect at the particular point of intersection into two different directions. So that, but if the two magnetic field lines intersect one another, so the resultant force on North Pole placed at the point of intersection will go along the two different directions, which is basically not possible. Understand? So that is the reason you can draw this diagram also. At the point of intersection, it is not, it is not possible because the resultant net force will be moving into two different directions. So the North Pole, it is not possible to show by the two different directions at the point of intersection. So that is the reason. So that you will get one mark. Is it clear, guys? Any doubt? So this is all about this. So how you feel? Is it a tough paper? I don't think so. If you have been little concentrate, send me people can get it. Is it SR now? So there. So that is the reason I will say always you have to understand the question well so that you can make it everything very easy. That is what it is. Any other Saturday Sunday will practice maximum number of questions, maximum number of sample papers. So with this, I'm going to leave you. So understand the question is very, very important. Particularly this 14th question, please kindly practice it. This is the double character. So two kinds of characters. What is the two characters? It is not monohybrid, understand? Dihybrid ratio. So dihybrid ratio means two characteristics are coming. So one is male, another one is, sorry, uh, like uh, we can take it. One is uh, uh, round yellow seeds and as well as wrinkled green seeds. Do you remember? 
die hybrid inheritance that is the type it will come so that is the reason you have to be very careful so that we are going to get one hybrid f1 crossing what is the coming they are asking so f1 crossing we used to get a four uh, four hybrid ways to get that is what i am writing here so you might be check it in our classwork you might be having it yes uh parental cross and f1 crossing explanation of results of die hybrid ratio you can see f1 crossing we are going to get uh, seeds, what is the seeds we'll get? Capital R, small r, capital Y, small y, we used to get always. So we used to get the possibilities. So that is uh, everything, list out all the possible gametes. So this, this question, everyone should practice it without uh, uh, fail because it is based upon the dihybrid inheritance. If you have any doubt, you can ask me on Saturday. The Saturday also we can practice it. So that is what we have to remember it and uh, while i'm teaching the inheritance and acquired traits i have shown you the father face and mother face father is having a brown eyes and as well as uh, brown uh, brown hair wrinkled hair mother is having soft and black hair and as well as blue eyes so cross breeding so that is be very careful so this list out all the possible gametes of hybrid they are saying hybrid means what f1 crossing we have to do it okay so f1 crossing here we are going to get one genotype in uh, genotype in uh, parental cross that genotype we are getting four types of f1 crossing so that is what you have to make it very carefully so if this is all about this question paper hope you all been done well so with this i'm going to leave you thank you all we'll meet in tomorrow's class thank you everybody thank you sir clear okay Kevin. sure